Jeremiah chapter 47. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet. Who he is. Now we started chapters where Jeremiah is going to speak to the heathen. The Gentiles. Against the Philistines. And that's who last night was Egypt. Now it's the Philistines. Before that Pharaoh smote Gaza. Egypt's going all over, the, all over the place to fight battle. But it wasn't going to win against Babylon. And we're going to find out that the Philistines are going to be beaten before the, the, the Pharaoh. It's going to be wars and rumors of wars until the Lord comes. Thus saith the Lord. Behold waters, and we saw that in chapter 46. And that's a gathering of people. That's a group of people. And you get that from Mystery Babylon. She sits on many waters, and, and it says the waters are many peoples, kindreds. Rise up out of the north. There's that north again. Egypt is south. And shall be an overflowing flood. And shall overflow the land. And all that is therein. So it's, the army is coming. And it's just going to overpower. Overflow. The city. And then that dwell therein. Then the men shall cry. And all the inhabitants of the land shall howl. Misery, pain, sorrow, fear, distraught. Woe is me. At the noise of the stamping of the hoofs of his strong horses. Not just horses. Strong horses. And remember with the Egyptians and their horses, Solomon went to Egypt to get their horses. At the rushing of the chariots. So there is a troop of horsemen. Horses alone. Cavalry. Lancers. And there are, with horses, there are chariots. And we know Pharaoh and his chariots because they crossed the Red Sea. In the midst of the Red Sea, God drove off the wheels and drowned Pharaoh. At the rumbling of the wheels, that would be of the chariots. The fathers shall not look back to their children for feebleness of hands. That would be the Philistines. Here comes this Egyptian army, fierce, overwhelming. That the fathers are not even don't care about his children. Nothing I can do. I'm weak. That's the point of America today. There are fathers out there, they don't care who their children are. Their children don't even know who their father is. Their children got fathers that live at home, they are at home, fathers got other activities better than the children. Because of the day that cometh to spoil all the Philistines, spoils when after the, the war, after the battle, you go in there and strip the same. You get war bounties. You get nice swords, nice shields, money. Whatever the dead have on them. And to cut off from Tyrus, that's along the Mediterranean Sea. Zidon, Mediterranean Sea. Those things are up against the Mediterranean Sea. Every helper that remained. So Tyrus is going to help. And Zion is going to help the Philistines. It's going to be no avail. For the Lord will spoil the Philistines. Pharaoh's army is coming. But God's going to allow. Go ahead and take what you want. And the remnant of the country of Cathor. 
Baldness has come upon Gaza. And one of the things they do for death and misery is they shave their heads. Ascalon, a city in uh, Philistia, is cut off from the remnant of the valley. They're all by themselves. There's no help. <clears throat> How long will thou cut thyself? Cutting is another thing they do for death. That's the thing why God doesn't allow the Israelites to <laughs> tattoo. Because when you tattoo, you're cutting yourself with needles. And all that is the symbol of death. And the worship of death. And your number one tattoo that you will find is skulls, death, And those things that are in relation to, to death. And don't tell me, I, I, I've been in biker ministry and I've been in the prison ministry. I've seen the tattoos. O thou sword of the Lord, uh, uh, John R. Rice's paper. That's not the word of God. I know over there, the, the word uh, it speaks about Ephesians, the word of God, the sword. Word, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper and two-edged sword. Hebrews. But that's not the word of God there. That's a literal sword. David saw the, the, the angel of the Lord over Jerusalem with that sword in his hand. Balaam saw the angel of the Lord with the sword in his hand. They weren't holding a Bible. But John R. Rice hampers away from the King James Bible. He's got other perverted Bibles, so he don't know what the Word of God is. No disrespect to John R. Rice, but anybody who goes away from the King James Bible and has other Bible versions, and you can check his writing, and you can check a letter that he's written to people, he's not King James. And when you open up a sword of the Lord, I have many opportunities and many months to see a sword of the Lord. You check the scripture in there, and you do the crossword puzzle, it's not King James. You're not rightly dividing. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. You think they're using the Bible, the word of God, to, to fight? The Egyptians? If the Egyptians are going to use the word of God, they're going to use a perverted word of God. O oh, thou sword of the Lord, how long will it be ere before, as poetic before, thou be quiet? That's what the world that's what the world says about the preaching of the Bible. Shut up. We don't want to hear it. Put up thyself into the scabbard, and that's a sheep. Rest and be still. It's been talking about battles. And the question comes in, Lord, when are you going when are you going to stop miserizing, that's a word, the Philistines? But you remember we are at a point right now. How many years going all the way back to King Saul have the Philistines been a curse to the nation of Israel? And what did God say? I will curse them that curse you. How can it be quiet?
So if you're going to say that the sword of the Lord is the word of God, how can, are you telling the, sword, the word of God to shut up? Are you a man of ministry and, 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 and teaching others and, and a scholar and all that? And as far as the sword of the Lord, you, are you telling, sh shut the word of God up? The King James, you would. It's the sword that's been killing. Again, it's a figure of sword. God does not have a sword coming down. Now, when Jesus Christ comes back at the second advent, he's got the word of God coming out of his mouth, the sword. That ain't a literal sword. That's the word of God. But Jesus Christ is not in Jeremiah 47 coming back. God is using the Ethiopians. I mean, the Egyptians, excuse me. Are you telling me the Egyptians are using the word of God? With all their idols that we just read last night, that God is going after Pharaoh for all the gods? How can it be quiet? See, the Lord has given it a charge against Ascalon. Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia, uh, uh, a Philippian city. God's word is, Pharaoh, go conquer, the, go conquer. And Pharaoh's using swords and horses and spears. God is ordering. But the word of God's not there. It's not Jesus Christ coming back and against the seashore, that would be the Mediterranean Sea. There have he appointed. God, had, go attack the Philistines. Get them. Spoil them. Enemies of Israel. I will curse them that curse you, saith the Lord. 